Rob, this is another spectacular find from Richmond. How did you find this one? Uh, ben, believe it or not, um, this also comes off Marathon. Yeah. And uh, it was late one afternoon and we just completed a round of mustering, we call it, where yep. we put all our cattle together because yep. that's what we do, we're farmers. Yep. We're holding out a mob of wieners late one afternoon and we noticed protruding out of the bank of a creek the tip of what appeared to be almost like a tree trunk, a piece mm. of fossilised wood. So we scratched back into the bank mm -hmm. and here we uncovered this skull, as you can see, that's probably not short, not far short of a metre long. Yeah. Um, that was very exciting and um, the next morning we went back down to the same location and we contacted the Queensland Museum in Brisbane yep. and they came up with an excavation team and over the course of the next 12 days we were to uncover this magnificent specimen laying in the ground exactly as you see it here. Yep. This obviously is a pliosaur, lived and swam and bred in the Cretaceous Sea of Queensland over 100 million years ago yep. and to find this remarkable specimen which we are told is around 100 million years old yep. less than 800 meters from the house where you live is truly amazing and uh, how, man, <laughs> how You're fortunate we are so um, uh, an absolute amazing specimen the paleontologist at the time was telling us won't it be amazing if we mm. find the head and half the neck of this thing when we dig in here and of course as we uncovered here's the flippers the tummy the rear flippers and the tail so absolutely um, spectacular too and very very fortunate to find something like this. So basically the most complete plesiosaur skeleton pretty much in Australia. We are told and probably uh, if not the world um, this is a, a very very significant fossil. Fantastic. It's on Rob's property at Marathon that both the Richmond Pliosaur and Minmai were discovered before they were taken to where they are now kept at the Queensland Museum. We stopped by at Marathon Station where Rob's mother Meg was kind enough to show us the site. This entire area used to be part of Australia's vast inland sea, and many of its former inhabitants have been preserved as fossils. So here were a stone's throw from where they found the Richmond Pliosaur, as it's popularly known. This is one of the most complete plesiosaur skeletons ever found in Australia, and represents an animal which is basically new to science. What it is, it's about a four metre long, very fast swimming predator, eating fish, this sort of thing. But there's you know, other bits and pieces, all the rocks around here are, of course, preserving other animals. One of the interesting thing, things that's come up is the remains of a giant squid. So what you're actually looking at here in these several blocks is part of what was once a metre and a half long cuttlefish bone and is indicating a giant squid of about the order of two and a half to three metres in length. These occur reasonably commonly throughout these deposits and represent yet another bizarre animal that lived at this time during the age of dinosaurs. So fossils are not only dead bodies, but they can also tell us about the life of the animal. What I've got here is a series of plesiosaur vertebrae, but one of them in the middle has what is in essence a bone infection. Uh, it's had an injury of some sort, something bitten it perhaps, or you know, anything could have happened, but certainly bacteria have got into the bone and created a callus. And this has been preserved within this fossil and tells us a piece of information about the particular life of this animal. So this is the original skull of the famous Richmond Pliosaur and it tells us a lot about what this animal was, what it was related to and what it was doing living in the oceans way back in the Cretaceous. Basically we can see from the rest of the skull it's got flipper-like limbs. But what does the skull tell us? Well the start we've got this very long thin snout and what that means is effectively the Richmond Pliosaur is an eater of small prey. It's eating small stuff and catching them with fast sideways sweeps of its long thin nose. The teeth are quite large and interlock, much like a crocodile. So looking at modern animals today, the freshwater crocodile is the most obvious example. We can see that it's got the very same types of adaptations that it would have needed to catch fast swimming fish. These are the orbits, the eyes, and they're kind of forward facing, uh, imparting it can, it can see and grab onto its prey. And this is the most important part. These two very large holes are where the jaw muscles sit. And you can see that they're absolutely massive. The bite on this animal must have been incredible grabbing on, tearing and uh, effectively uh, breaking apart whatever it was going to bite onto. So effectively you can see from the fossils we can start to reconstruct a living animal from long dead bones.